Russia recruits citizens of Armenia and Kazakhstan into its army in attempts to avoid mobilization. The Russian Federation is reportedly attempting to recruit foreigners in its army in an effort to prevent internal mobilization and replenish significant casualties sustained in the fighting in Ukraine, says UK Defence Intelligence report. As reported by UK analysts, the most recent English language advertisement invites foreigners to enlist in the Russian Army's special force. It offers a lump sum payment of 2,200 US dollars upon contract signing, a Russian passport, free medical treatment and training. Online job postings began to surface in the middle of 2023, targeting individuals from nearby nations, specifically Armenia and Kazakhstan. The postings offered a monthly income of 1,973,000 $1, US dollars, as well as a lump sum payment upon contract signing worth 5,140 US dollars. Additionally, Russia recruited immigrants from Central Asia in 2023. Reports of migrants from Nepal and India being enlisted and sent to fight in Ukraine have also surfaced recently. It is likely that many of those that have been recruited are not professional soldiers but migrant workers and have been coerced to fight under false pretenses or with the offer of financial incentives, UK Defence Intelligence said. According to intelligence, the number of foreigners in Russian forces is most likely limited and they are absorbed into existing rather than any new special formations. The UK Defence Intelligence writes that Russia is likely to avoid further unpopular internal mobilisation measures. Furthermore, given the large losses Russia must continue to examine all recruitment options in order to maintain a high rate of human influx. On the 10th of April, UK Defence Intelligence revealed that Russia was seeking to recruit about 400,000 contract soldiers in 2024, a move that is necessary to support its forces in Ukraine, which have suffered huge losses. NATO countries prepare population for war with Russia all civilians may join military reserve units. Lithuania is establishing permanent military training centers that will operate nationwide to prepare personnel to serve in the rear during war, Defense Minister Lorinas Kasiunas told. A total of 27 command headquarters that are due to be fully operational next year will be set up in the major cities of the NATO member countries in an effort to prepare the public to send a deterrent signal to the enemy, the official said. The Baltic State's Defense Ministry expects such command posts to become a link between the Lithuanian Armed Forces and the citizens who can defend the country with arms in the event of war. We are talking about the fact that the public will already know where to go if they want to contribute to the defense of their homes and country, Kasiunas explained. He further clarified the purpose of these territorial defense units by saying that they will fight against diverse groups, protect objects and carry out other tasks. The bill submitted to the Lithuanian Parliament, the CIMAS, envisages the command centers having units under their command made up of existing reserve troops, riflemen, as well as all owners of firearms, including hunters. According to Cassiunas, some 10,600 members in civilian reserves, around 2,000 riflemen and 800 members of the National Defense Volunteer Forces are expected to join. The official encouraged the wider public to enlist, saying that all civilians may join and that everyone will find their place in the units. Earlier this week, Germany sent its first military unit to Lithuania as part of a plan to have a full armor brigade permanently stationed in the Baltic state. It is believed that all this is related to Lithuania's preparation for a possible war with Russia. There are warnings that Russia may attack the Baltic countries after Ukraine. The territories of Syria and Lebanon are becoming the main location of the Iran-Israel war. Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has vowed to punish the evil regime of Israel after the attack on the consular building in which Mohammad Reza Zahedi, a high-ranking commander of the Quds Force, the elite foreign operational wing of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, was assassinated. In Israel, political leaders as well as military and diplomatic officials said they were ready for any scenario. Asked if it was Israel that carried out the attack, Michael Ronan, head of South and Southeast Asia Division at Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said, they say Israel carried out the strike. Well, I don't know. What I can say is that Israel is ready for any response from Iran. In this condition, after years of engaging in shadowy tit-for-tat operations, Iran and Israel's unofficial battle in Syria has been thrust out into the open by an unprecedented attack in the Syrian capital that killed several top Iranian advisers. 
Now, even with Israel already mired in the longest and deadliest ever war with Palestinians, facing ongoing clashes with Hamas and constant fire from Iran-aligned axis of resistance factions from at least four nations, the Iran-Israel indirect war taking place on the sidelines of the war in Gaza threatens to become the main event. It's very important to differentiate between the level of hostility we have witnessed so far and the potential for a full-fledged regional war. Eren Edzion, former head of policy planning at the Israeli Foreign Ministry and deputy head of the Israeli National Security Council, told Newsweek, It's very, very different. For Israel, the situation has presented a strategic dilemma for Israeli leadership, as observed by Edzion. That is, to what extent do we attempt to directly attack Iran rather than simply attack its various proxies, including the ones in Syria? In addition to the hundreds of strikes conducted by Israel against Syria over the course of at least a decade, he pointed out how, throughout the years, Israel has taken some actions on Iranian soil, for some it has taken responsibility and for some it has not. Mustafa Najafi, an Iranian researcher specializing in Middle East conflicts and Iran's foreign policy, argued Tehran had already outlined its reaction to what may come next. Part of this response is done directly by Iran, which is, of course, limited, Najafi said. A major part is also more intense by resistance groups in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon and Yemen. The location of the answer also includes both inside Israel and the assets of this regime outside the occupied territories. The Persian Gulf, the Arab countries, the Oman Sea and the Mediterranean will be the target areas outside of Israel.